All right, um, just, just something uh, to point out. Um, Europe is kind of in, a, in this crazy situation right now. Uh, Europe dominated intellectually, at least, by the left and by uh, kind of uh, uh, leftism more broadly, a kind of pacifist, anti-Western civilization, um, anti-self-defense kind of attitude. Uh, Europe is now facing three crises where it's going to have to take a position and, and is, is so far taking a position that is feels very uncomfortable for the leftists who I think dominate the intellectual high ground uh, in, um, in, uh, in Europe. They've got a war in Ukraine right in their front step, which they've kind of united around, but they're never completely comfortable. It's a war after all, and they're not, they don't like Ukraine that much. They fear Russia, but they also are dependent on Russia and have been in the past, and, and, uh, and, and they fear it, and so they don't know exactly what to do. They're supporting Ukraine, but how long will that last? Particularly if the United States doesn't support Ukraine, what's going to happen to Europe? By the way, you can say the same thing about, about uh, the general left in the United States. They're facing... Ethnic cleansing in Azerbaijan, they don't know exactly what to do with that. They don't know how to think about that. Are the Azeris the good guys? Are the Armenians the good guys? Well, the Azeris kicked out the Armenians, so the Armenians must be the good guys, and the Azeris are the bad guys. But Azerbaijan is one of the only alternative sources of natural gas for Europe, uh, through pipelines at least. Uh, you know, so if they piss off the Azeris, do they risk losing their supply of natural gas. They've already lost it for Russia. What do they do? And it's not like the Armenians are their friends. Armenia, until very recently, was aligned with Russia. Uh, it's shifting alliance now because Russia's basically walked away from them. So what do they do with the Azerbaijani-Armenian crisis? There's already a lot of political uh, angst in Europe around it, uh, around Turkey's role in the whole thing, around... Uh, France is taking Armenia's side. Exactly how this plays out, they don't know. Uh, and then now they, they have this challenge uh, uh, with Israel and the Palestinians. I mean, at the end of the day, the Europeans have been pro-Palestinian. They have funded the Palestinian Authority to a large extent. They have ultimately, in one way or another, funded Hamas to a large extent, whether they'll admit it or not. Uh, you know, the Europeans are very, very, very entrenched in the Middle East on the side of the Palestinians. But that doesn't seem right right now to them. And what do they do? They've been anti-Israel for so long. Can they switch? Can they really change? Probably the answer on the, on the European left is no. But the reality is that right now there is no European center-right. The European center-right is fading. And what's on the rise is an extreme right. Uh, an extreme right that tends to be pro-Russia, anti-Islam, anti-immigration, probably anti-Israel, but not clear. Uh, so kind of the weakness of the left and the dilemmas the left faces and the hard choices the left has basically are weakening their grip on, on, on political forces in Europe. The center-right is in no position to pick up the votes because the center-right stands for nothing, stands for nothing, presents nothing, and is not a popular alternative in Europe. And therefore, what you're seeing in Europe right now is a significant rise in a, um, in a real right, in an in a, in a, uh, in extreme right, uh, in a um, nationalist, uh, xenophobic right uh, that is united by a few things, by, by hatred of immigration, united by, particularly in Germany, by a suspicion of climate change and climate change policies, um, and, but not particularly economically liberal, not particularly economically free, not particularly free on any issue. So what you're seeing is AFD, the, the extreme right political party in Germany, has just done unbelievably well in Western Germany. The AFD's base, the far right's base, has always been Eastern Germany. 
Now they're doing well even in Western Germany. And, and part of this is this sense of the left is gone, the left is finished, the sense is meaningless, it's moderate, it doesn't stand for anything. The world is turning upside down, there are massive crises everywhere. The existing establishment has failed us. The only people standing are the extreme right. Communism doesn't work. We tried communism. Communism is not a solution. What is the solution? Well, a nationalist with tinge of religion and, and a little bit of xenophobia goes a long way. And you're seeing that all over Europe. And what you're seeing is a rise of an anti-individualistic right. And um, so there was just an election in two provinces in West Germany. Uh, and uh, AFD, which used to get less than 10%, was getting closer to 20% or 15 to 20% of the vote. Uh, and this is yesterday, I think, or the day before yesterday, where the votes were being held. So uh, part of this is a general resentment against immigration. Part of it is an angst because of the war in Ukraine and because of what's going on in Israel and everything else and wanting a strong man to bring stability and peace after all, right? Um, and uh, let's see, what else? Uh, yeah, so uh, we're seeing a, the rise, the significant rise of far-right political parties in, uh, in Europe. And, and at this point, I think the greater f danger to freedom seems to be a growing nationalistic crazy right that is, that is sweeping across Europe hasn't quite gained majority, majority status. It's still a minority, so we will see, and maybe there'll always be a minority, but they are gaining influence in almost all of Europe.